In this update video, I'm going to be combining the last two to three weeks worth of work that I've been doing in the garden, including potting up to the final pot sizes in both the greenhouse as well as the polytunnel. And we're going to be doing a bit of an update on the Mozambican beast that's in the hydroponic system in the grow shed. And of course, we're going to be doing an update on the chili chump seed kit. And I have a bit of a bit of a surprise, bit of news about that right at the end of this video. So stick around till then. And there's a bunch of other stuff going on in this video too. I'll be showing you my soil mix. I'll be showing you how to harvest vermicompost. So quite a lot to get through. Let's get started so we can try and get through it all. This year inside the polytunnel, I will be running a bit of an experiment. Last year, I grew my chilies directly in the raised bed, so in the soil. And this year you can see what I'm gonna be doing. You can see that I have these pots partially submerged into the, into the soil and I will be filling those up with my potting mix, the same potting mix I'm going to use in the greenhouse. I am going to plant some chilies directly in the soil in the middle bed, so I'll be able to see a bit of a comparison. The next thing I need to do in here is set up the drippers because there's a, a fewer plants than I had last year, so I had to take the pipe out at the end and I'll just create a new, a new dripper section so that it is sufficient for these eight pots that are going to be on each side. Let's make some compost. The first thing we need to do is get a good quality compost. Now, when I say good quality, I don't mean expensive. I mean just a plain old compost. It could have things like manure in there, that's no problem. Or even your homemade compost, that's perfectly fine. And I would use my own compost, but this year I wasn't able to make enough of it. So I had to buy in some. So we've got a good quality compost, no extra additives in there, any water retaining elements or anything like that. Just plain old compost. Then we need those two elements over there, perlite and vermiculite. Then over here we have some Epsom salts. So just a touch of Epsom salts into the mix as well is gonna really help the plants out. And then the last ingredient, it's my worm compost. So I'm just gathering it. I have to leave it out in the sun like that for a little bit just so the worms can dig down and I can scrape off from the top. This mix is good not just for your pepper plants, but for pretty much any vegetable plants. This will do fantastic. This here is a beautiful KN that we are about to pot up to its final pot size. We can see that it already has some peppers coming through. Very excited to uh, get itself growing, it looks like. But a question I get asked quite frequently is when should you be potting up to the final pot size? So here we can see at the bottom, these roots have all started poking out. That's a good sign that you need to go up to the next pot size. And if you go to a pot size this big, what's gonna happen is this is gonna go a bit dormant. This plant is gonna stop growing. Right now it's about three times as high as the pot itself. And it's probably gonna just stay dormant for a little while until the roots have established themselves in this new pot. Effectively, your plant is not gonna get any bigger. It's not gonna be able to absorb as much sunlight because there's not gonna be as much greenery. So it's a bit of a balancing act. If you go to a three or four or five litre pot next, then it gives it time to spread its roots. So it'll take like a couple of weeks to spread its roots. It'll start hitting the sides and then this will start just growing like crazy. What I'm gonna do now is gonna put it on pause for maybe three weeks to a month before you'll start seeing growth again from these plants. Now I'm doing that purely because I just don't have time to do 100 plants from this pot size to a five liter and then from the five liter to the 12 or 10 liter pots. These are 12 that I'm putting inside the polytunnel. But I don't have time to do that multiple times. <laughs> I have enough going on at the moment. Let's have a look at the root system here as well. Look at that. That is perfect. Root bound, 
just what you want to see. Some people will go and tweeze this apart a little bit. I don't do that. The roots will do their own thing and the plant will do just fine. There you go. The KN is done and ready to go into the polytunnel. So obviously my plants are all at different phases of growth and we can see this one here is still quite small. It's not even the same size as the pot yet in terms of the height. And there are some roots coming out the bottom, but just barely, not a lot, like we saw in the previous plant. So what I'm going to do with this, because again, I do not have time to do this two weekends in a row. I'm going to be potting up everything today, but I'm going to do something a little bit different with these. So with this one here, what I'm going to do is I've potted it up so it's ready for me when I am ready for this plant to actually come out of the smaller pot, it's already done. So I'm going to leave it inside this pot in here, which means I can use the dripper in here as well. I don't need to water these all individually. And when I am ready to go, I just take this out and take the pot away from the plant, put the plant directly in the soil. But this is ready to go now. I'm going to leave it exactly like that, at least for the next couple of weeks until this gets a bit bigger. If you've been following my videos, you'll know that last year I crossed a couple peppers, my lemon drop and peri peri. And this year I tried to grow out the seeds from that. And unfortunately I had a bit of a problem in the beginning of the season, but I'm going to be starting a few more today. So I've got a few more of these seeds left, probably about 60 or so. And I'm gonna plant quite a few more today and try and get some to germinate so that we can plant it into our hydroponic system. I'm gonna be using the same system that I'm using at the moment for my Mozambican uh, chili. So the one that's a real beast at the moment. And I'll use the opportunity to obviously show you how I built that system. So let me go and get some of these into some tea so we can get them to scarify and then put them inside our system so that we can get them to germinate. These are the plants that I'm going to be putting inside my large hydroponics bed inside the greenhouse. You might notice these obviously are in soil. So I'll show you what I'm going to do to clean these off, get them ready to put inside the hydro bed. These ones aren't exactly going to be too simple to do either because it is very root bound. I'm going to be ruining a few of these roots, but it should recover. It's not ideal. Uh, these baskets shouldn't... Uh, shouldn't have these plants in for so long. But this here is my Mozambican chili. We can see that we have some chilies on there. So I'm gonna try and be as gentle as I can and just take this out. Oof, really don't like doing this. Okay, so we can see we've lost a few, but we should be all right. I'm gonna go and put this directly into the hydroponics bed and uh, let it get settled and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the plants that are inside the soil. So for this, all we're going to do is take it out of the pot. And let's have a look at that lovely root system. This is my Bendigo. You can see there, it's not entirely root bound, but there's some lovely roots on there. And all I'm going to do is take my hose and just wash off all the dirt. Pretty much as simple as that. We'll just do it on that side as well. So there you go. There are the roots. And uh, there's still a bit of dirt on there. I'll pick off a little bit of it as I can. But this is going to go into the hydro bed now. And hopefully should recover. It's going to be in a bit of shock right now. But uh, I think in a few days time it should be just fine. Let's go and have a look inside the polytunnel and see how the plants are doing. So we can see 
that they're all upright still nothing's died just yet <laughs> so that's all good news and there's some new growth on quite a few of them today's a bit of an overcast colder day but we've actually had some decent weather over the last couple of weeks now I'm gonna focus in on that plant over there because uh, that's the only one I have a little bit of a concern about not too much of a concern though let's go have a look so this is the one that came out of the hydroponic system and I planted it directly into soil. Now we're going to have a look inside the greenhouse in just a little while and you'll see that when you do it the other way around, taking it from soil, putting it into hydroponics, you actually don't have as much of a problem. But we can see here, this has got quite a bit of drooping going on, but I'm not overly concerned because there is some new growth coming through and there's still, there's still quite a few healthy leaves on this. So it looks a little sorry for itself right now, but it will improve over the season. What's happening is you're taking this plant out of its nice cozy hydroponic solution which is set at a constant sort of temperature and then you're suddenly shoving it into soil where the temperature is up and down all the time and uh, it doesn't have free access to the nutrients as it did in the hydroponic system so you know it's gonna be a little bit upset about that but like I say it will recover and I'm sure that will have a, a lovely bushy growth in not too long. Let's have a look at a couple of the others. We can see yeah, the Maruga chocolate, beautiful, just branching out everywhere. We can see that it's splitting over and over and over. So this is gonna be a lovely big bushy plant. You can see down there a lot of new leaves, a lot of new growth. So really happy about that. And these as well, I mean, most of these are doing really well. Uh, they'll really start shooting up in the next couple of weeks. We are still going through some nighttime temperatures of about five or six degrees maximum. I believe tomorrow night we're going to have a minimum of one degree Celsius, so that's not good. But over here we can see the apple canby, sweet apple canby. We already got some peppers coming through on there, and there's quite a few peppers on some of my plants in the greenhouse. But that one there, I'm quite keen to try out. KN are really keen this year. We can see that we have quite a few of these. I'm sure we're going to have some ripe ones in the not too distant future. Probably the next update video or maybe the one after that. Let's go have a look inside the greenhouse and see how those plants are doing. It's so nice to see green inside the greenhouse again. The, uh, the dead plants in there over the last few months was a little bit depressing. But... They're looking good, they're looking healthy, nice color on the leaves, and I am very happy with the progress so far. Let's have a look at the hydroponics bed. So, uh, something's eating these, I need to give them a bit of a spray. It's not too much damage just yet, but I really need to keep an eye on that. But like you see in the polytunnel, when you take a hydroponics plant and put it in the soil, it doesn't fare as well as taking soil plants and putting them in hydroponics. These guys are doing really well. Actually, they are doing really, really well. This one here is looking fantastic. This is my KN. Lots of new growth. Uh, yeah, KN. Lots of new growth coming through there, uh, down the bottom, and also all the way up the top. And then, of course, that was a hydroponics anyway. That's my Mozambican chili, and plenty little chilies coming through there. Really looking forward to trying these. I'm wondering how they're going to compare to my Peri Peri because these are a little bit bigger than my Peri Peri I think especially when you look at one over there but we'll be doing a, a testing video for that for sure over here is the Chili Chum seed kit so these plants are doing well the Ancho Poblano is doing really well uh, we already have some some peppers coming through I know a lot of people pull their peppers off in the early season I don't I've already talked about why I don't but uh, that was in the last video so if you want to check it out you can see my thoughts on that but I'm just letting these go and just see how big they get and the plant will keep on growing and we'll see some lovely nodal growth like this where there's new branches coming out of these nodes I'm sure this will be a nice big plant there's the turbo pube it's a beautiful plant I don't know if you can make out on the video but uh, those leaves are a little bit furry hence the name uh, capsicum pubescence that's the family of these but the leaves themselves are a little furry and uh, the back there that is my ahi crystal it's looking pretty 
and at the back on the right is my jalapeno mammoth. Nothing coming through yet, but that plant is looking set to be a nice big bushy plant. So we've got one last plant to check out, and that is the massive Mozambican hydro plant. So let's go check that one out and then finish up this video. This is just such a beautiful plant. And uh, you can see the growth in here. Hopefully you can see it, if it's bright enough. But that is just stunning. The canopy is seeming to settle around about here. And uh, mm, that smells amazing. It's a very green smell. I'm using the extractor fan quite a bit. There's, a, there's quite a bit of humidity in here, I can see on the walls. But the uh, extractor fan does do its job. I will probably increase the frequency that it runs, but the plant isn't complaining too much. It actually needs a little bit of humidity to start setting fruit. And there's plenty of flowers, and I believe there are a few fruit on here already. But I just come in here every now and then and just give it a bit of a shake. Actually, you can see some fruit down there. There's one starting out. And there's quite a few others in here as well. The way I've been feeding it is more for the growth phase, not for the fruiting stage just yet. I'm shifting over to the flowering right now, uh, or in between flowering and fruiting. And then I'll go full fruiting uh, nutrients probably in the next two weeks. But we can see there are a few chilies coming through. I think this one will be quite full of chilies very soon. And I will be harvesting these seeds because obviously this is only one plant. Well, there's actually two plants in there. But because there's only one type of plant in here, they can only pollinate themselves. So I'm guaranteed that all of these are isolated, which means the seeds from it are going to produce the same plant. And I will be selling that on my store uh, in... Well, we'll see when we get some ripe chilies, but probably in the next month or two. I'll do a bit of a review video on the chilies themselves and uh, probably we'll put them up for sale at that point. But beautiful, beautiful plant. Absolutely love it. And I can't wait to compare it to my own peri peri. Let's lastly have a look at our vegetable garden. We have corn in three rows and they're spaced out about 50 centimeters, 45, 50 centimeters in between each of the, the rows. And then in between those, I have various squashes. So he has a butternut squash over there. We have some patty pan squash over there and various other ones here. We also have some gem squashes, which are some of my favorite. We have quite a few of those actually. And uh, let's go back to this one. So this over here, we have gem squashes and we also have some patty pans. And what I want this to do is grow up around this archway. So you can see that on the other side, I've also planted a few. And I'm really hoping that I'm gonna be able to create a bit of a bit of an archway here that's gonna have some squashes dangling from it. That would be pretty awesome. I've seen some pictures online that uh, people have done that with entire tunnels, like all the way down. Looks pretty damn nice. And over here is my garlic that I planted at the end of the season. Well, about November last year, and it's doing really well. I think I probably got about another month or two before that'll be ready to harvest. And over here we have a few other little things. There's some peas that I planted over here, nothing's come up just yet. And uh, those ones over there, there's some aubergine. I'm really hoping I get at least a couple aubergine or eggplant, whatever you call them. And over here, these here are some beetroot. And we can see that quite a few have come up. Just need to keep an eye on weeds, but those there, little beetroots. I'll just space them out over there. And then on this side of the garden, we have some more squashes. And we also planted quite a few peas, which again, not yet come up. I think that the weather needs to improve just a little bit before we get to that point. I've also planted some squashes all along the front. Uh, there's a couple of my extra corn that I had left over. I planted those there as well. This doesn't get as much sun as my main beds, but we'll see how it does. Hopefully we'll get at least a couple bits of corn off there. One last vegetable I'm gonna show you is my artichoke. I planted this about three years ago, and we finally have a head developing that I'm sure is gonna be edible in a month or two's time. So I'm really proud of that. Last year I had a head develop, but it wasn't really edible. 
and pretty much let it go to flower. And we have a couple of the smaller ones here as well. A really pretty little plant, but really tasty as well with a bit of butter. I've been getting some serious artichoke envy from a channel I watch called Dave's Allotment. He has some of the biggest artichoke bushes I've seen. He is a really funny guy. I'd recommend going and checking out his channel. He's a great gardener as well. But there's my artichoke bush and like I said, really proud of that one. In the beginning of the video, I said that I had a little bit of a surprise around the Chili Chump Seed Kit, these plants over here. And what that is, is there's a camera up above me over here that is taking snapshots throughout the day. And I'm doing that obviously for a time lapse that I'm going to have at the end of the year that I'll put out. And I actually put out a couple time lapses from my 2019 season just a couple of weeks ago. So go check those out. I really do enjoy time lapse. It's nice seeing the progress over such a short period of time. But what I'll also be doing with that camera is every morning at 7.45 a.m. GMT, I will be taking a snapshot and uploading that photo to my website so that you guys can go and check what the progress is like for that day. And there's a drop down in there as well so you can select previous days as well. And uh, I thought it'd be quite fun for you guys to be able to compare the progress of your plants with mine in between me updating you on these update videos. So go have a look and let me know what you think. Also, if you are wanting to post up your progress pictures on Instagram or Facebook, make sure to use the hashtag CCSK2020, so Chili Chum Seed Kit 2020. And I'm trying to figure a way how to feature those pictures on that page as well. Uh, I'm still working on it. There's a few technicalities that I need to get through. Anyway, that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned a couple things. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, stay safe and stay spicy.